Well, welcome everybody to the Adam Savage Project. I'm Adam. I'm Norm. And I'm Bill. Hey. <laughs> Bill Duran. Hello. Bill, it, it is good to see your shining face again. How are things up north, up in the Pacific Northwest? Things are doing all right. Uh, I got to tell you, I for a, for a while there, I was visiting you guys frequently. <laughs> Going down, flying down to San Francisco to, to paint stuff with Norm and make things with you and then the the cave and i haven't got to do that in a long time i just want to say i really miss that and i miss you guys so i'm glad oh, that we got a a chance to chat i'm also too. eyeballing that suit of armor in the background of your shot there. that's pretty <laughs> cool <laughs> i'm working on my mark one oh. uh it's a it's a kit that i bought well over a decade ago on ebay some guy did a slush pour of this great totally not correct but but genuinely good uh, casting in Onyx. Um, they did actually a really neat thing because the because the Mark One is so bilaterally asymmetrical. They um, they only made one shoulder, one arm, one thigh, one calf, but they made the back side of it look correct. So they basically double dressed each part to be the left and the right. So they only had to make one mold for each. There you go. That's think think smarter, uh, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> very very clever. Yeah, you, know, you can I, see the front or the back at once. You can't see both right. at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, Bill, tell us how you've been surviving the uh, the the lockdown and all the craziness. It's been it's been something. Uh, doing okay though. We kind of slowed down on making YouTube videos for a bit and and wrote a book. We'll talk about that in a minute. Excellent. Um, but otherwise doing, doing pretty great. I, I have three things, uh, that have helped me a lot uh, mentally and emotionally through all of this. Three things. One of them, my, uh, extraordinary wife and partner, Brittany, who has been awesome and has, uh, continued to be awesome. Uh, two, I have dabbled with meditation in the past, but, uh, this through this last summer, I really, really got into daily meditation. I use an app called waking up that's been really great for doing daily meditation guided meditation uh and also i started uh seeing a therapist which is really fantastic every Dude. week i talk to a therapist and uh it's really those things combined really helped with the added stress of you know going through a pandemic that is such a lovely thing to hear i love talking about therapy i've been in it for most of my life and uh you know I, every now and then I'll find myself in a in in Britain or New Zealand or Australia talking to someone and in those countries therapy is not necessarily as culturally accepted as it is here but then I'll get into a deep conversation with some of my friends there and like you can feel the need you can feel right like we we need to talk about our stuff there need right. the, the neutral place to discuss it and to 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 kind of work that stuff out is so important yeah, it's been fantastic. Um, it's first time trying it out uh, for me in my 38 years of life, and uh, it's something I wish I'd started doing sooner. Uh, not wait, don't wait till things get dire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so presumably, then you started up making videos again. You took a break. And oh then, yeah. So how has that been going? Have you? Uh, how has COVID changed your production? Uh, it's not too much different. The way we film, generally, I'm making stuff. My wife, Brittany, is filming. Uh, mm -hmm. Although recently, we've been trying to get both of us on video uh, more, just because it's more fun. I really want to share that. Frankly. It's great. Um, uh, we have one employee right now, Paige. She works from home, so she hasn't been in the shop since, uh, or at least not with us, uh, since the lockdown started, or since March. Um, we've just been taking our time more we've been a little setting a much more realistic pace for ourselves when it comes to filming and making uh so for example we finished a video last week we put that video out on monday this week has been a lot more like shop maintenance fixing up some uh misbehaving 3d printers got some <laughs> light bulbs that need replacing in the shop doing a little more maintenance this week um so we haven't been working at the breakneck pace that we usually do and i think that's been pretty good <laughs> That's been the biggest change for us. Some yeah. of us, some of us have been filming like mad people in their shops every day. Look at you, Mr. Savage. <laughs> I, I will, I will give you a counterpoint. Yeah. Which is that one of the ways that I actually deal with stress is by overproducing. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, I'll be stressed 
And I'll be like, look, if I can just shoot five more tooltips today, then I'll feel like I got something done and I'll push myself, push myself and I'll go home and it'll take me hours to kind of wind down right. from this stress production, like I- I extension I've done. Um, so, uh, the last couple of months have been very different. I've done a couple of deeper dives, the Samaritan project, uh, multi-part projects. Uh, and yesterday I was like, eh, I could shoot three more tooltips today, but you know what? I'm going to go home while it's still daylight and enjoy an early meal. There and like, go. that was definitely part of self-care for me. <laughs> that's great. Uh, something else I've been doing. I, uh, uh that's been really nice. Just a, a nice change of pace. I finally made the investment. I bought some Sortimo cases. Oh, you yeah. did. Yep. There are, I know there are lots of other types of cases out there. I've tried them all. And honestly, getting to play with the the setup you have in your shop, Adam, uh, got me to thinking, nah, these are the best. These are the best. I got to have them. Uh, And they're pricey, but I bought four to start. Uh Uh, And I've been organizing screws and nuts. I've been, I have a label maker. I've been labeling everything. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Like a, like an hour every day when I come into the shop, I'll do a little bit of organizing. Yep. And it just feels like I'm putting my life back in order a bit. All of the nuts and bolts going the way uh, they need to go. You know, you gave me this idea. Sortimo should actually have a subscription service where you oh pay gosh. like, right? You pay 25 <laughs> bucks a month. You get a new 20, sorting 20. case every other month. <laughs> there you go. Uh, something I've been doing. So when I bought them, I bought four cases with just the normal one by one containers in them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but some of the things I have, why they don't fit in one by one containers. So I found a 3d model on Thingiverse uh, and I've been printing slightly larger ones. And I have a one by, this is a one by two and a one by three comes with little pegs on the bottom so that you can fit it down. And in fact, I've replaced enough of them that next time I order more Sortimos, I'm going to order one that's empty because I have spares. Now I have spare containers to fill it. Or I could just print my own, which is really great. That is freaking fantastic. Yeah. I had um, I had a tube of epoxy uh, leak in my epoxy glue drawer, uh, and so I've got like um, I've got like two old Sortimo containers that the bottoms are just like caked in part <laughs> A epoxy. I'm like working up the nerve to deal with it and clean it out. Yeah. Oh, ugh. I had a <laughs> spill. We had our 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 hazardous materials bin. Uh, our fireproof cabinet had a spill. Fortunately, it was water, uh, but I dealt with that the other day. So, like I said, a lot of shop maintenance, a lot of organization. I got a. Um, I have to build some racks, some standing racks on wheels for the Sortimo cases. Mm-hmm. Um, my goal. We we're in this shop space until May. That's when our lease runs out. And my goal is by, by then to have everything on rolling racks, so that when I have to move, if we end up moving, I can just wrap plastic around those racks, roll them into a truck, nice. and be on our merry way. That's my goal for the next like seven months. That's my whole existence, Bill. Yeah. Everything's on wheels. Yeah, not, not so in my shop. I need to rectify that. Well, one of my favorite eBay search terms is casters lot. Mm-hmm. And then I'll buy like 24 at a time. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> I'll have to do the same thing. I um, need many casters. Now, you and I were corresponding via text a couple of weeks ago about the Samaritan. And uh, you took a dive into a project that, oh, look at yours. <laughs> is that a 3D model oh. printed one like you did with this your is- Blade Runner? This is a casting from Harrison's shop. Ah, okay. Yes, so yes. I bought it. Um, now, I want to add a magnet like you did, Adam, so that mine makes uh, clicking noises. I do have glowing bullets, though, so that's fine. I don't have the glowing bullets yet. Yeah. So um, I want to add a magnet like you had, so it goes click, 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 click when you spin it. That is beautiful. Um, yes. Yeah. It, I was saying before we started the podcast, Bill, it's very fun how much um, how much I'm looking up stuff to do or looking up a technique, and you're the one who's made the video on how to do it. <laughs> right? Well, we've made like 700 videos over on our YouTube channel, and uh, we've tackled quite a lot in the last, I think, eight years we've been doing them. It's crazy. You know, it's uh, interesting, like eight years, right? Do you see... and I know it's tempting to go revisit old processes and because you're going to find new audience members and new people who are just in the cosplay. 
do you see a cycling of like a new generation from when you started? Like what what is the what is the progression for you know a punished props viewer for and eight years ago to now? Right. Well, one of the big things that I've noticed, so 3D printing, obviously super huge in prop making now. Not so five or six years ago, right? Yeah. In fact, it was almost it was almost a four-letter word, 3D printing. Oh, he's cheating. Like so many people were saying, oh, do it the old fashioned way. Yeah. Now, if I don't 3D print it something, the comments are like, yo, why don't you just 3D print it? <laughs> but what's amazing about the 3D printing, I think, is that for people who have never made anything uh, with their hands before, they can spend a couple hundred bucks on a 3D printer, get a 3D model, print it, and start working on something that's already formed, right? That They don't have to start from the, the, the yeah. ground, build in a, a new thing from scratch. I feel like it's gotten a lot more people into making all sorts of things just because the barrier to entry has come down so much. Uh, and in prop and costume making, at least for, for cosplay, like I said, people expect it now. People are get surprised if you don't 3D print something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then when people do finish, so, oh, there's so many. It's it, One of my favorite things is just to get a message from someone with a picture that says, I've never made anything before. Here's my first project. And I look at it and my jaw drops because it looks so good. Yeah. Uh, and that's not how it was 10 years ago. There was a lot, much more of a, a barrier to entry, much more of a buildup for people developing their skills. But nowadays, the information is flowing like water and people are getting into it and making just some extraordinary things as their first build. Yeah. It blows my mind. Yeah. And that's and what I've been seeing. Well, I think that also builds a lot of momentum for them. And I'm really pleased to see uh, the reduction in gatekeeping about 3D printing. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know? the information is out there. The Geez, you can get resin printers for a couple hundred buck, bucks now. So two, three hundred bucks, a really good size one. I think the, yeah. the miniatures community has really flourished because of that, the Ooh, tabletop yeah. miniatures. And it helps that um, the tools, like, you know, the 3D modeling tools, which have been around much longer than the, the printers themselves, all that, all the you know the the institutional knowledge of 3D modeling. There are so many CG databases. Uh, I also find that the communities are much more respectful now. They've kind of matured in terms of understanding you know the labor involved in 3D yeah. modeling, and it's fewer people saying STLs please, and yeah, many yeah. more saying, "Hey, support this guy's Patreon or buy this sure. model." Um, that feels like it's a maturity in the community. That's uh, that's a wonderful segue to talk about this project that was inspired by Adam's uh, uh, Samaritan. <laughs> that's so what you, I was going to bring up. That piece uh, of beautiful. Oh my goodness! So you were you were sending me pictures of your Samaritan when you were working on it, and I love chunky revolvers. <laughs> like big chunky revolvers are just my jam. I got some hiding behind me. I got some. Oh yeah, Destiny, me. Borderlands, all of that stuff. Yeah, and I have always loved the show Trigun, the anime, Vash the Stampede, and I've loved this revolver ever since I first saw it like 20 years ago, and I just, I wanted one of these. Dude. And at the time, I actually looked it up, and this was in the early 2000s, and I found people selling resin kits back then. But I was very poor, and when someone wanted like 80 bucks for a resin kit, I was like, too rich for my blood. <laughs> and totally. I never got one. So... This year, when you were making your revolver, I was like, I want to make one, too. Now, um, this is 3D printed, yep. and I do fully intend to make a, an aluminum one, mill one. I need to buy some tools first, though. Wow. But um, I just dove in a couple months ago. Like, got, I got super obsessed. I watched the show. I screen captured lots from the show to get this. And I what I wanted was to be able to do all the things. So it, it oh, opens to reload. Nice. Amazing. I've got some dummy bullets in there. Um, this part, I'll have to, I'd have to unscrew it, but this part comes off because in the show it transforms, obviously. Uh, it does, it does this bit of business that I love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? It spins. Uh, and then when you pull the hammer back, it'll cycle the cylinder and it'll fire. But wow. also when you pull the trigger, it what? cycles and does everything. Yeah. Oh. So I spent most of my time figuring all that out and test printing lots and lots of stuff, but I got it to work. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This was really fun build. We have a video on our channel and I'm also selling the files for this over on our website. Bill, that is so, so pretty. And I can't believe you got single and double action working. 
Me neither. <laughs> when I, I had made... to give up. I had to give yeah. up double action on the Samaritan. I am not a good enough engineer to make it work. The um, 3D printing helped because I would model a part, print it, test it. Did, if it didn't work, I could tweak it, print it again. Um, and it took like five or six tries to get it right. It yeah. probably took more than that, actually. But <laughs> I was accounting. When you were I modeling, say, were you thinking of it knowing that you were going to eventually start replacing parts from printed to to machined? So, you, like, diffusion is what you use, right? And, mm -hmm. and so not combining parts for one print because you would think about how you're going to machine the individual pieces? Yeah. Well, actually, when I got started... Um, I, I was a little more ambitious when I got started. For example, there's an auto ejecting mechanism on here in the, in the show when it pops open, it's supposed to pop out. I started working on that and it was a little too technically challenging for me. So I abandoned that. Uh, but I was trying to keep in mind that I wanted to eventually maybe mill this on a, a three axis CNC router or something like that. But after a while, I was like, nah, let's just make it work for a printer. I'll cross that bi bridge when I get to it. Um, um, I, this would require um, a bit of manual machining on top of some uh, CNC machining, which is fine. I can figure all that out, I think. Here's a hint. Um, the mechanics on, if you're machining it out of aluminum, the whole back part where the mechanics are, I would consider machining that as two separate clamshells that you join. That's not a bad idea. This one, I, this has a plate that pops off this whole oh, part okay. here. So it is, two, it, it does have two parts so I can get at the guts in there. That's great. The, the uh, Blade Runner gun, the I have a a kit of the original one here. Uh, that one does not have a panel that pops off. You just gotta <laughs> kind of like jam everything down in there. <laughs> yeah, the bulldog's a bit of a pain in the ass on that. Yeah. Part. When I designed my own, actually, right above that, the blue one is my prototype for the one I designed. I made a pa side panel that comes off. <laughs> Yeah, I was um I was about three quarters of the way through my build when I talked to the original maker, and it turns out the original Hellboy Samaritan in the back is in two clamshells, and I oh. made my job so much harder by not doing that. I had to make the hammer mount on one side only. Oh wow! Huh. Because I can't actually get a pin in. It's a, it's ridiculous. This is ridiculous. It's a, story. It's a whole thing, isn't it? <laughs> Um, so yeah, this was a, this was a project, uh, Hey, I see a little crack forming. Look at that. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> that won't happen on the metal one. Uh, sorry. We are our own uh, worst critics, aren't we? Oh, um, that is such a pretty thing. Um, tell me, sir, uh, what have you been imbibing, uh, in media? What, what shows movies have oh. been, uh, have been your safe space while you've been in lockdown? Um, Oh, well, tons. Let's see. Lots of YouTube. Most of what we watch is on YouTube. Lots of tested videos. Obviously, you guys have been vomiting them out. We've been <laughs> consuming them happily. Uh, in fact, it's been it's been kind of charming to watch you be a YouTuber for a while and having to film yourself. I love that some of that stuff gets left in. That just makes me that makes me so uh, happy. <laughs> it, it's um, the, the Joey and Gunther have been very vocal about the stuff that works, and it's all the stuff that's totally amateurish. And they're like, yeah, yeah we're just going to keep on <laughs> cutting it in. <laughs> um, last week, we watched all of the extended Lord of the Rings again. Oh, wow. Like you do. And then we, we've been diving through the behind the scenes. Now, we've watched all of the, the behind the scenes for the original Lord of the Rings movies are exceptional. I'm so blown away that they had the foresight to film all of that. Yeah. And I watched all of that in the early 2000s when it came out. Right. And this was when I was in college and I was I was um, in school for um, 3D modeling and animation. That's what I went to school for. And at the time, I was looking at all the Weta digital stuff going, ooh, I'd love to do that for a living. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember just being totally blown away by that back then. Watching it, you know, 15, 20 years later. As a, as my life spun drastically over to making practical stuff instead of instead of uh, digital stuff, I have a whole new appreciation for all the costuming and the chainmail and the and everything. But also, I know some of the people at Weta Workshop now, and yeah. I'm like, hey, there's Peter Lyon making a sword. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or I I got to meet Daniel Falconer when we were in mm -hmm. New Zealand and hang out with him, and he's on there, and he looks like a child in those videos. It's great. <laughs> Um, so it's just been really cool. We still have a lot more of those to go through, but it's been fantastic to dive through those again. There, there's a funny thing that happens. Uh, on many of the occasions when Norm and I have been there together, 
we both, of course, watched those behind the scenes uh, films obsessively and know many of them by heart. And we will like share knowing glances with each other about something we see at Weta that we watch in the behind the scenes. But the thing is, is almost no one at Weta has watched those, especially, <laughs> especially <laughs> Richard Taylor never watched yeah. one minute of them. So we'll quote himself to himself and he'll be like, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Um, we've been, let's see what else we've been keeping up with the great British bake off mm -hmm. new episode tonight. Can't wait to dive into that. Dude. But also in the same vein, we watched the great pottery throwdown. There are three seasons on HBO max. I caught that yesterday. I saw that it existed. How is it? It's fabulous. It's got the same like warm tone that they have in the bake off. Um, I've learned a lot about pottery and ceramics, like a ton. Awesome. And, it's just charming and wonderful. Everyone hugs at the end of the episode. There's a lot of crying. Oh. Um, it's a it's a, a a warm hug during the middle of the pandemic. So I've been enjoying that an awful lot too. Those are the best kind of competition shows. Yeah, yeah. Although I do I do also like uh, Cutthroat Kitchen, uh, <laughs> which is very much a reality show. Yeah. But Alton Brown is just the best, and watching him be a devious overlord makes me happy. With <laughs> Mandalorian, also. We haven't started season two yet. I think oh. we're gonna wait till um, there's a few more episodes out in time. All right. All right. Uh, although we did we did finish all of what's available for the Great Pottery Throwdown, so we may need more. <laughs> A uh, good luck avoiding spoilers. Try your best to do it. Yeah, I'm not too. I'm not too concerned uh, if anything gets spoiled. It'll. I'm sure it'll still be fun to watch. <laughs> uh, I do still have to watch the whole behind the scenes thing on Disney Plus that they put out. I haven't yeah, seen that yet. That looks it's really, really good. That's remarkable, and I'm actually excited for the finish of season two because I'm expecting there'll be another deep dive into season two, like there was into season oh, one. I hope so. The gallery on Disney is one of my favorite. One of my favorite bits of media. It's just so it and, and jumping off of that Weta behind the scenes stuff. It's exactly what you want after taking in such a great thing as Mando. Absolutely, yeah. And also, if you're just hungry for more Mandalorian, I and mean, who isn't? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more thing that we just recently finished. I wanted to show off. This is one of my very favorite video games. And Brittany's my wife, Brittany. We made a mist book. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. And uh, what's better is that it has a screen in it. Oh. See if I can do this. Boop. With an old phone that doesn't want to work great, but I have Mist installed on here, like the game. No. Oh, it's it's loading upside down, but you can play Mist on the book. <laughs> That's hilarious. Dude. So it's a it's a let's see here. There's a little cell phone in there. Just an old Galaxy. <laughs> oh. It wants me to log in. I'm not going to do that, but you can totally play Mist on our Mist book. Oh, I like the way the light bounces off that relief on the front. That's really oh, nice. Oh, yeah. So this is cold cast resin and bronze or brass powder. Mm. So it's cold cast metal on there. Yeah. That is so pretty, Bill. Thank you. Uh, the book, uh, you can still kind of see the text. The book is an old Harper's book from 1884. What? <laughs> yeah, this is an old book. <laughs> so much mixed um, media speaking of books speaking of you books. have another foam smith book out <laughs> what a wonderful segue <sighs> so one of the things we did we we had been working on this for a while but um when lockdown hit in march we're like all right i'm gonna stay home for a while let's finish this damn book and we did so we have the whole foam smith series foam smith one is about armor out of making armor out of eva foam foam smith two is about making props out of eva foam Home Smith 3 is about making all your headgear, helmets, masks, crowns, the like. Yeah. Deep and, uh, the compound curves. Yeah. Oh, so many. So this is the hard. I think, think making helmets is the hardest thing. That's why I devoted an entire book to it. And, uh, you know, when we make our YouTube videos, we do projects or, or technique type videos. And it all gets put out on the Internet. It's all free for people to go watch. But. Um, the book is like all of that information, everything I know about making stuff out of foam condensed and put into one volume. Mm. So like, I didn't, I didn't leave anything out. Everything I know about making helmets is right in that book. Uh, and I have it's, some here. Right it's there. so oh, generous of you to, right off the oh, look at that beautiful thing, Bill. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yeah, the patterns I love are just links in the book where people can follow along and, and download them and and yep. you know use from a variety of suppliers or whether it's SKS or Yaya Han. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's really interesting because like foam itself it used to be just the the, the exercise mats, floor mats, yeah. and now there's so much specialty foam just for costuming. Um, yeah. Things like I didn't even realize you know like foam clay you could shove that in a in a mold. In a push mold, then you have that. Totally. In, in the oh, book. wow. Yeah, you can mold and cast foam clay. This was Beautiful. the the base of it was made out of sheets of foam, but all the sculpting and texture on here was done in foam clay. Dude. So this one's uh, one of the examples in the book. Like Norm said, we have um, uh, patterns you can download mm-hmm. uh, to, to follow along. In fact, the, uh, the Dwarven helmet, which was designed by my buddy Ben Barnard, uh, was meant to look sort of Lord of the Rings inspired. Very much. Uh, we did a video on this recently, and I gave out these patterns for free. So uh, if you want to just give it a shot, you totally can. Bill, I'm curious, uh, after three Foamsmith books, if there are responses to the books from people who have read them, used them, have comments on them, if there's been a response that's really surprising to you or unexpected. Um, really, what it comes down to, like I was talking about before, the things that I didn't expect was for people to – to for their skill level to jump up so quickly yeah um because uh when i started making costumes 10 more than 10 years ago um there was some instruction out there yeah uh sean thorson's blog has been really great um harrison started doing his blog around that time obviously the whole rpf uh and then youtube channels like backyard effects uh which isn't around anymore but that was a really great place for it uh but it's not the it's not the the enlightenment of foam fabrication that we're living through right now. Yeah. So when, when someone's like, Oh, I'll give that a shot. And they make their first, again, like I said, their first project and it looks, you know, like this, it just blows me away. Uh, and I'm also still just like surprised whenever anyone follows along, whenever anyone participates, cause it's a lot to ask. You got to go buy a lot of tools and materials to do this. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but thousands of people have have done it, and it really well, warms my heart. It's so generous of you to release the patterns, because that is a th- that, just making sure you know you're working from a reasonable pattern is co- quite a high threshold to entry. Yeah, yeah. So the in the helmet book, so patterning a helmet, man, is so hard. So like a lot of the book covers that how to make your own pattern from scratch, um, but. Uh, so many people, once they finish a pattern, they will just give it out or sell it. Um, we have a couple of patterns that we sell. We have a lot of more that we just give out for free on our website. But I'm not the only person doing that. And I'm certainly not the best foam smith out there. Like I, I wrote the book, but a lot of other people have sort of <laughs> elevated the craft and they're sharing or selling their patterns as well. Uh, and especially for newcomers to be able to go, oh, just trace it and glue it together and follow this guy's video. Okay, that's a lot easier than staring at a blank sheet of foam yeah. And look at it, a picture of like Captain Marvel's helmet and going like, OK, now what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a tall mountain to climb. Uh, I've got some more uh, fun headgear. So one of the projects is this uh, this crown, more of a simpler project here. Uh, but lovely. we also did, speaking of the Mandalorian, I actually made this before the show came out. Oh, I did a Mandalorian helmet. Wow. Yeah. So that's all foam. Nice. Bill is so pretty. And then uh, I have a Boba Fett helmet as well. Actually, Adam, you should be familiar with this one. This is from uh, Fallout. You wore this to disguise yourself uh, at Silicon Comic, Silicon Valley Comic Con, and you I almost fell down some familiar. stairs. <laughs> the antenna and the trim are my favorite part of that. It's the, yeah, it speaks to the versatility. So yeah. And then the classic, we got Boba Fett right there. Good. That's so good. Of course, videos on all of these over on our website. <laughs> uh, doing- have you done a meetup at all of uh, other people wearing helmets or costumes from your patterns? Yeah. So um, when we have conventions, so Dragon Con, uh, which unfortunately we didn't get to do this year, um, we do meetups every year at Dragon Con, which is always the best, right? When you, because talking to people through a screen is awesome and pictures are great and everything. But when you see something in person and someone's like, hey, I watched your video and then I made all of this. <laughs> I'd like, I want to cry. I'm like, I can't believe you did it. Uh, 
but then like we have Emerald City Comic Con also got canceled this year. But when we have it again, we also always have meetups there. And it's the same thing where everyone gets together and just talks shop and points at stuff. How'd you make that? How'd you do that? Here's how I did this. I, I frequently, I'm frequently confronted with someone that says, oh, I weathered this based on watching videos on Tested. And I watch, I look at it and I think, that's way better than anything. Yeah, <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> someone else, yeah, they'll say, uh, oh, I just watched your video and then I made this full set of Halo armor. And I'm like, I've never made Halo armor. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that looks so much better than anything I could make. Um, uh, I actually, uh, I've been using a wire cutter for the first time in my process. Uh, oh. I picked up a, I picked up a little bench top unit and, uh, it's been really fun. I've been doing, Oh, Ooh, look at that. that's nice. stuff out of, this was I actually did a tooltip video about it yesterday and that's oh, the finale. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't have one of those. Every time I talk to Adam, I end up buying more tools. You know, it's why we do these videos, Bill, because every time you used to come over to San Francisco, you would pick up a thing in the shop and say, oh, what's this? And then you'd yep. have to you'd pick out your phone and buy it online. And because you don't come down anymore, we have to make the videos for you. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. Bill, if you got a power supply, yeah. all you need is some 24 gauge nichrome wire. <laughs> Somebody is not at the front door. Alexa is lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some 24 gauge wire and a power supply, and you got your bench top wire cutter. Brilliant. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, let me see. I actually have one more fun thing to show off. Another video we did because I've been oh, playing VR this. games. Yeah. So this is a grenade from the game Half Life Alex. It looks and like a tape measure. Doesn't it look like a tape measure? Doesn't it? Well, that's why I built a tape measure into it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that game so much. And the first time I saw a grenade, I was like, oh, it's a tape measure. I have a dozen of those. Uh, so I 3D printed a clamshell that goes around a tape measure. I have a little lever here to lock it so it can lock and still retain all the functionality. This is both metric and imperial tape measure. Most of my tape measures are that way because we are a we are a, a mixed. Uh, we, we do both in, a, in our yeah. shop. Bill. Uh, well, I would love to abandon <laughs> everything that isn't metric, but I live in America and everything I buy is is imperial. I, I, I have also a picture. can't do the translation in my head very quickly. Yeah. In my head, I'm imagining you had a VR headset on holding the virtual object in like, yeah, invisible hand, stunning it from all sides to Absolutely. get the reference. <laughs> it was great. Um, we just, uh, I just did a screen recording. I just told it to re record the screen. And then in the game, I just held the <laughs> tape measure up to my head. And I was like, what does the bottom look like? And what does this side look like? And I got perfect orthographic views of every angle, oh. dropped that into Fusion. And I, uh, I 3D modeled an analog for my tape measure and just modeled this around it. It was a little trickier than that, but but I got it to work. I just, it's just, and I use this every day. And it makes me smile every time I grab it. <laughs> Uh, that's what it's all about that's why i love doing projects like that it's totally it's specifically all about that smile every time you pick this thing up mm -hmm. <laughs> right it's just like, like yeah. just like these things <laughs> <laughs> dude your paint finishes are just gorgeous what is oh, the, what's the paint on that this one is um spastics actually oh, okay so I did a base coat in black, gloss black yep. Tamiya, I believe, with the airbrush. And then Spastix Mirror Chrome. Uh, I usually use that if I need a chrome visor. <laughs> I'll spray it on the inside of a visor, and it's just thin enough that you can see out. Oh, wow. Um, but it's a very bright chrome finish. Um, for example, if you get all clads chrome, um, it's a much darker chrome yeah. than this. Oh. So I wanted a very bright uh finish on it so i went with the spastics mirror chrome in it i love it i uh, uh, just heard about spastics for the first time and i saw they also actually sell a black undercoat mm -hmm. yeah i don't have that but the the um oh, yeah. the to me it seemed to work pretty well i do a lot of stuff with all clad uh yeah. and i use their aqua gloss to, to seal this mm. their gloss uh, is so 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 good and like it's a uh, it's how i've worked on a couple of chrome things it gives a really nice uh dimensional coat yeah, it's also very necessary if you're going to weather this with oil paints, which I love using my oil paints to weather mechanical looking stuff. Um, those lacquer finishes like all clads, the the uh, the oil paint will strip that right off. 
if you don't clear code it. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> Actually, my <laughs> my Ray Blaster, which is right here, was the the project I learned. I learned that little bit of knowledge on. <laughs> So yeah, clear coat, that aqua gloss is really good. It protects it. Um, and then also you can weather right over the top of it. Yeah, I guess and, every every bit of shop knowledge is born out of that moment where you go, what? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll those those hard learned lessons, you'll never forget them. <laughs> Indeed. No, yeah. I, 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 I love sharing the shop mistakes with other makers because they're so formative and they feel terrible at the moment they have. And you're like, no, mm -hmm. I thought I was close to being done. That's the worst. And if, oh, with paint jobs, it's the worst because that's the last thing you do. Yep. So doing that. So when I goofed up my Ray Blaster, which is behind me, I don't know how to point. <laughs> uh, that was the, literally the last step. Weather it and then it's done. Yeah. I was like, just one little pass of weathering. I wiped it with a, a cloth and the whole thing would turn black <laughs> again because it stripped all the chrome paint. Oh. And the, the worst part is you can't fix it that day. You got to let it dry and repaint it or sand yeah. it. But at that point, it's that like sticky tacky uh, yeah. film and you, you just got to let it dry. Yep. You got to put it down. Go home for the day. Try not to think about it. That's why meditation's important these days. Right? So there you go. So uh, I had a mistake work in my favor the other day. I did some chrome painting of a very shiny helmet. Uh, I used the Molto refill with an all-clad two sealer. Um, and because I was experimenting with a new primer, I had a lot of paint on it before I did the chrome. And I was trying to dry each layer but it was dimensional enough that it was soft and it will remain soft probably for another week. But after I sprayed the chrome and sealed it, I came in the next day and there's the tiniest bit of crazing across oh. the whole thing, except that it's made it look better. Oh, mm. It's actually ended up making it look more kind of like a weathered metal than I originally intended. So the mistake worked in my favor. There you go. That those are those are rare, rare moments, but that's really cool. Very, especially with the chrome, because man, yeah. there's so many ways to screw that job up. I yeah, and I'll uh, I'll admit, I uh, I painted this twice. I painted <laughs> it once, and I was not happy with the finish. Um, so I sanded it. I sanded all the paint off, and painted it again. Yeah. Um, and even even now, I see a couple spots where I'm like. You know, I could paint it a third time. <laughs> like, no, 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 put it on. It's done, Bill. It's done. You, you'll make another one. I want to make one out of metal. That one will be perfect. <laughs> I want to check in with you. When you realize you've got to paint it again, mm -hmm. for me, some it often takes a period of time, a week or two, for me to kind of work up the energy to go back in and do it. Mm -hmm. What's your process for doing that? Do you just, like, roll up your sleeves and get right back into it? Uh, that... That's been kind of the default mode, mostly because we've tried. We we're usually trying to get a video done by sure. a deadline. Um, th with this one, it was like a Thursday, and we didn't necessarily have to have a video done or anything. And I kind of knew I was gonna want to repaint it, but I thought, no, I'll put, I'll spray the chrome on, and I'm sure it'll look fine. And I did that, and I put it down. And I looked at it, and I was like. Eh, it's not quite what I want, but maybe when tomorrow when it dries, it'll look better. And then the next day I looked at it and I was like, no, no, <laughs> no it's not better. It's worse. Uh, and that was a Friday. And I thought, well, do I really want to come in and sand this on the weekend? And I thought, I'll wait. I'll wait until Monday. I'll give myself until Monday. Yeah. The next day I woke up, bing, eyes open. And I'm like, nope, going to go fix it. Uh... I, just, I couldn't let it. I couldn't let it linger that much longer so i came in on the weekend and i and i repainted it uh but I really i think you, it comes down to how motivated i am about finishing the project and i was very excited to finish this up <laughs> i will say this is actually a good a good combination here um like i was saying before i've been doing daily meditation which is awesome like 10 minutes a day but the real interesting thing is when moments that for a little bit where a little bit of mindfulness might help I'm starting to recognize moments like that. So, for example, when I was working on this project, it was 3D printed and my 3D printer was acting up. So the layers weren't sticking together really well and it cracked a couple times. Right. Mm -hmm. There's one particular moment where I was working on something and it cracked and that meant I was going to have to spend 15 minutes fixing it. And I got really frustrated. And then I set it down, closed my eyes, took a few breaths, cleared my mind and I felt better. 
Yeah. And that's not so not my normal mode. Normally, I'm just like next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. But I'm slowly learning to take moments like that to reflect a little bit, realize it's not the end of the world. Uh, and that's kind of where I've seen the biggest benefit when it comes to the practicing meditation, which is really great. Uh, when I had to repaint, repaint this, there were a lot of moments <laughs> where I'd stop, close my eyes, yeah, <laughs> clear my head, <laughs> not get super angry about it, or let myself get a little bit angry and work my way through it, and then move on. Um, and that's been really great for a lot of, not just obviously prop and costume related stuff, but all the other things on the internet that I see that make me uh, spiral into a rage. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that is a perfect place to wrap up today. Bill, I'm so glad to hear you're doing so well. Uh, I'd love seeing your projects uh, and I can't wait till you can come back to San Francisco and we can play together in person. Uh, thank you so much. I can't wait either. I miss you guys a lot and uh, cannot, yeah can't wait to get to go hang out and make stuff again say Thanks hi to for Britt for us me. and uh well. have a great thanksgiving and for people out there have a great thanksgiving as well stay safe yeah be careful thanks bill good you to see it. you buddy good to see you too bye-bye